Hello Makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today we're going to unbox and test drive the Kalida Compact. Stick around. Welcome back Makers. Right next to me on the table here is the Colido Compact. It's a mini 3D printer, which has a build area of 130 by 130 by 130 millimeters. Now, a few special things about this printer. I actually got in touch with Colido a couple of months ago, about three months ago, not to ask them to review the unit, but to ask them the prices on certain printers because every photo that popped up online with Kalido also included kids. So to me, that tells me that this is a kid friendly printer. And seeing that I have a daughter, a seven year old daughter, which I really want to get her into 3D printing as passionately as I am, I am still in the search for that 3D printer, which will do the trick. A couple of weeks ago, Kalido got back to me and told me, listen, we're willing to send you a machine for review, the Kalido Compact, are you interested? Hell yeah, I am. I always am. So this is the machine and I thought to myself, let's unbox it and take it for a test drive, shall we? So I have my trusty knife. What's in the box? An accessory checklist. Look what looks like a quick start guide. It's actually user manual. Power cable, UK plug. Yes, finally it happened. <laughs> USB plug or USB cable, what looks like painter's tapes, a couple of Allen keys, a test print. And this test print is incredible. Power brick, always a plus to have a power brick rather than the normal power supply. And it's a meanwhile power brick, which is very good quality. And this is five amps piece of, well, it doesn't look like PTFE, but I'm guessing it's a PTFE type guide tube. They give you a test sheet. I'm guessing to level the bed or the Z offset. What I'm a bit surprised is that this is a spool of PLA white. I'm hoping that it doesn't use proprietary filament only. We have the build plate, which looks like, this looks like silicone at the bottom. Feels like glass fiber at the top. And we have the printer. It is there. So right off the bat, it feels nice and solid. It's, I know it's acrylic, but it's, it feels right. There's something, the good thing is that I can actually see what it is. And that fell. That is a piece of broken acrylic. And that is the downside of acrylic parts but I can see where it is from. The other side of this part, which holds one of the stepper motors, I'm guessing in place, but it seems to be bolted down to another part. So I don't think that's going to be a big problem. This is nice. Take that off. No, breaking anything. We have spool holders, plural, which bodes well because to me, that means it doesn't only take one spool, one type spool, it takes others. So I'm guessing this one, the small one, is for their proprietary spool, and this one is for normal filaments, I'm assuming. Open this up. In this. Last but not least. This is interesting because this does not have lead screws. It has belts for the X, belts for the Y, and also belts for the Z. Very interesting approach. It is not a heat bed. It also feels like silicone. So let me just check if it's also magnetic. No, it's not magnetic, but it kind of sticks on well. Cause it's like two elastic or rubber parts, which kind of suction together. I'm happy with that. Time to power it on. Power supply is plugged, wire is in, nothing else is connected. Gonna switch it on. I can hear fans but there is nothing else because it doesn't have a screen with it. It does have a standard USB uh, slot in the back. So I'm going to need my laptop. So now I have the machine hooked up to the laptop. On the laptop, I have the Printrite Colido um, Repetier or Repetier or Repetier, apparently, in French. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to install the, um, well, I'm gonna attach the filaments. I'm going to run it through the, what I'm guessing is the PTFE tube. So this, 
goes back here. I'm gonna grab the PTFE. Nice and clean, actually. Now, the only thing it tells you is that. It did come with a 512 megabyte, yes, uh, micro USB, and that holds all the files that you need to install the Repetier software for the Colido, pre-configured and everything, so you're good to go. What I'm gonna do now is simply um, heat up the extruder, run some filament through, and then we're gonna start a test print. The printer is running. Wasn't too easy, but it wasn't too complicated. Manual bed leveling was a breeze actually with this thing. This has become now my number one tool go-to for <laughs> leveling the bed and finding the perfect height or the Z offset. As you can see, it's printing. I just hooked it up to uh, Repetier, warmed it up, run some filament through, homed it, and threw in one of the pre-sliced G codes that came on the, um, on the USB um, dongle. I'm gonna let this run, and when it's done, we'll get back. And we're back. As you can see, I've run a few test prints, not just one. The reason for that is I have been sick for the last couple of days and I decided to take that time to just let the printer churn out a few test prints. The prints came out okay. The first print that I did, as you saw, was this um, little snake that came pre-sliced on the USB dongle. I think it printed around 100 microns and it came out okay for the most part. Slight Z banding, but nothing too noticeable. I then decided to try and print this cat right here. Now, while it printed okay, you can actually see the, um, the initial issues that I will probably have more of with this printer. And that is overhangs. And the reason for that is that it has no part cooling fan. I, you guys know that I have my quarrels against printers not having a part cooling fan. If, if a printer is meant to be printing PLA, it should most definitely come with a part cooling fan. So I can see where that will be an issue for me. However, other than the overhangs, the rest of the print came quite nice. I then decided to throw a 3D Banshee in Repetier. Now you guys know, or you heard me say before that I am not well versed in Repetier. So I just decided to throw this in and see how it goes. It's not perfect, obviously, <laughs> but it printed okay and it printed. So uh, I couldn't expect much more from that. It also printed at 100 microns. So I decided, okay, let me make the effort and throw in some 3D prints PLA purple and also slum, slice something myself. And I've decided to slice Charizard in slightly larger scale. This was printed a 200 microns. And to be completely honest, the layers on this thing are beautiful. The only two issues that I can see are the retraction settings, which as I said, those are my probably my fault because I'm not exactly sure how to calibrate Repetier. The other thing is once again, the overhangs. You can start seeing a few flaws wherever there's a slight angle to which the printer has to uh, cover in terms of the model. But other than that, it, it really printed out beautiful layers. So I was, I was very impressed. So then I decided, okay, let me try once again and try with the, um, with the 3D Benchy. It started out fairly okay. Then the second issue came out, which is my second quarrel with this printer. And that is you can only print via USB. Now it does have an SD card slot in it, but seeing that it has no screen, it's kind of hard to know exactly how you can start a print. So what happened is my laptop restarted because it had to install the Windows updates and the print failed halfway through. And that is something that will happen once again unexpectedly when you are printing via USB. Either way, I decided, okay, let me try and print another one. And I printed another one in 200 micron layers. And it's not half bad. It actually printed okay once again. The overhangs are an issue because of a lack of part cooling fan, but that is to be expected. I did find online 
this gadget right here. This is an extension to the uh, cooling fan of the hot end where you attach this to the end, cooling fan attaches at the top and it sort of cools the hot end but also takes a little bit of the cooling and pushes it through as a part cooling fan. The only problem with this is that it would reduce the build volume of the printer even further along the Y axis. And that's not something ideal, but it's something to consider. So that's my first use of the printer. What do I like about the printer so far? Please keep in mind, I've only had this printer for about two, three days now. I really like the fact the, that it's pre-built and, it, and you can actually use it right out of the box. It didn't take me too long uh, to uh, print with it. I like the fact that it's transparent and you can see the inner workings of it. I feel like a kid would be extremely impressed with seeing how a 3D printer works. I like that it's, it can be fully enclosed and I also like the fact that it comes with a power brick and not one of those pesky power supplies. Now, while the build plate is not heated, I actually have no quarrels with that, especially if you're advertising it as kit friendly. I really like the fact that it's a removable build plate as well and slightly flexible, making it easier to, th to take things off the bench. So far, the two things I don't like about this printer are the fact that it does not have a part cooling fan. And I believe that if you have a printer that prints mostly PLA, you need to have a part cooling fan. The other thing I don't particularly like is the fact that you need to have it attached to USB so it doesn't do standalone printing. I did however see that at the bottom there is an empty slot accessible where you can insert an extension which I'm guessing is to an LCD screen. I haven't found any information online but I guess that's what it's for although the screens that I have in my possession are not the same size cartridge or socket that goes in so I'm not exactly sure how that works. Other than that this is a really nice printer and for $489, while that's not cheap, it's still fully assembled. It's a relatively decent build volume for someone who's just starting out, especially if you want this for kids. So I can see this being quite a lot of fun as a starter 3D printer. But as I said, I'm just starting out with this printer. I still have quite a few more weeks to go playing around with it before I give you my final thoughts on this printer. But for now, it's looking okay. So we'll just leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I want to thank especially my patrons for their absolute awesome support. I wouldn't be here without you guys. Please leave a like, comment, share, subscribe. And in the meantime, happy making guys.